What is up everybody? Today, we are going to create this little layout using Framer and specifically the ticker, which basically is like a scrolling, repeating list of elements. Now, it doesn't just have to be cards like this. It could also be, for instance, this sort of situation where you have logos, like a trust symbol section. And we're just gonna talk about, and I'm gonna show you how to create this. And we'll also talk about, you know, some of the UI design, UX practices that we should follow when we're using this sort of thing. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. So the first thing I'll do is we're gonna add a layout to our frame here in Framer. And I'm going to specify I F for a new frame. I'm just gonna left click and drag out. We're gonna make this 100 viewport height just because I wanna add some scroll interactivity to this. So we have to have a section up here where we can scroll into the main section. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that fill and we'll take uh, this frame and just duplicate it two times, control D. And then we will specify for the height fit content. All right, so we're gonna work within the middle frame right here to create this kind of scroll activation thing. So we're gonna give this frame itself a layout as well. And it's going to be a vertical layout. And the first thing I'm gonna do is hit the type tool and I'm gonna put in our little title. Don't take our word for it. Don't take our word for it. So this is obviously, no, don't take our word. There we go. This is obviously like a testimonial sort of ticker that we're adding here. And we're gonna go ahead and add a font and yeah, I think we're just gonna stick with enter to make everything simple. I don't wanna screw around with trying to find the right font right now. Don't take our word. And then we're gonna go ahead and duplicate that. Um, and what was it that I referenced? Oh, take theirs, there we go. So take theirs. Now for better visual hierarchy, I'm gonna make this one larger. Don't take our word. I think we'll put period there. And then take theirs. We're just gonna go ahead and make that kind of like a nice bluish color and maybe make that not bold. Maybe we'll just do medium. Okay, I also wanna wrap this in a frame. Um, and the reason I wanna do that is because I wanna be able to take this information right here, take theirs, and we're gonna add a scroll animation so that when uh, this section is in view, for instance, uh, we're gonna give this a section, um, a scroll section. So we come down here and just give it a name. I'll just call this main. And then we'll take this, go back to our animation. We'll do section in view. We'll choose main. And we're gonna choose in the center. And instead of fade in, we'll do slide in bottom. Let's see kind of how far. So that's pushing it way too far down. So what I'll do is just reduce the X value to like 50 for now, there we go. And now we can just use our keyboard up arrow keys and we can see what this looks like if we scroll down. So if I go back, it kind of happens real fast. So in order to adjust for that, we can play around with these values. So this kind of shows right up there. That's kind of like where I want it to show, like that, okay. And now that we have that out of the way, let's focus on the main part, which is the ticker. So, so to insert a ticker, let's just go up here to, to the type under insert and we just drag it. All right, so typically we just put this right here and we want this to go all the way across. So we're gonna do 100%. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and group both of these into its frame. And the reason I, I wanna do that, so we have a frame inside here we take both of these elements and add a frame. There we go. That way, when we adjust our spacing, these two stay together. All right, so notice it says connect to content, add layers or components to infinitely loop on your page. So what's cool is there's little three dots right here and you can just drag those over and attach them. So what I wanna do is first create the actual card design. I think I'll just do that in here, add a layout to center it all up. I'm gonna hit the frame. And this is just temporary. I'm not gonna place it here. We're gonna make it into a component and all that good stuff. So for now, um, let's go ahead and add a radius. So I'm gonna hit up on my keyboard arrow key and that's looking good. And then I'll go ahead and make the background white. We're gonna go ahead and give ourselves a shadow and we're gonna give ourselves a colored, kind of real soft shadow. So what I'm doing is just making our, well, there we go. We wanna boost that up, there we go. And let's take our 
x and y maybe to 6, our blur is going to really increase. And now we have to readjust this down so we can take the opacity down a lot and make it real soft. I kind of like this aesthetic on some cards. And so essentially now we're just going to have like an avatar section. Um, so if I get out my um, Figma, let me hit plus here off the screen, create a new design file. Um, let's bring this over. All right, shoot, yeah. Oh, I have a stupid split window and I'm not sure how to get rid of, there we go, <laughs> okay. So um, we're just gonna take an ellipse and I'm gonna right click and just do a copy, our Figma to HTML framer, which is the Figma, uh, the framer plugin for Figma. And I essentially, what I want to do is just paste that in and I'm going to specify, and this is position absolute right now. So its parent is a relative element right here, as you can see, and then this element, the ellipse is absolute. So we can do stuff like this. I, we could take it and adjust the top pin value to a negative value. Now we're not seeing it right now because this element, the parent, the parent element is overflow hidden. We want to change that to visible. So now that we have that, we could fine tune this kind of in the center, and then we can come down here to fill, and we come down and choose the image, and then specify unsplash down here, and we'll just type in person. This is so nice that they worked in unsplash just to make life easier. So now we have this person, and we also want to make sure that this is set to fill and not stretch or anything like that. And now we can go ahead and add the rest of the content. So we're gonna add a layout within this frame, the card frame. Now, unfortunately, when you do that, it, I forgot that it breaks that. So let's change that back to absolute and then give it a negative value, get it back position where we want it to. And then what we can do is specify, let me get a reference here, um, the actual description. So I'm gonna hit T and I'm gonna left click and just drag out and I'll, you know, just because I'm lazy, I'm gonna grab this description right here, paste that in. Obviously, we need to go way smaller with that. So let's get this down here. I think maybe we'll do like 18 for now and make this black. Probably make that a little bit smaller, 16. And increase this and also change this to regular and center it. Okay. so. Here, what I wanna do is add a um, 100% value on the width. Don't worry, we'll add padding here in a second. And then also the height will be fit the content. So now we take the parent element and give it a padding. So when we give padding, you can see how it's affecting the inside portion here. So I think that's fine. And then outside of that, uh, we'll take this and we'll choose start. And now this, this white space is way too close to this text. So what we could do to fix that is we select this stack and we choose this option right here to allow us to specify more padding at the top. So 60 or so works well there. And then we also have the person's name. So we'll duplicate that. And I'll just put John, Jonathan Doe. <laughs> and then we'll go ahead and make that bold make it our blue color. If I just go grab this over here, there we go. And we'll make it a little bit smaller to like size 14. And I wanna go ahead and increase this white space here. There we go. And actually I wanna adjust that a little bit more. There we go. And then I'll take this and duplicate it. We're gonna take both of these though and add a frame. That way we can individually control, if we add a layout here, the white space between just these two elements. And this is gonna be the person's title, like account executive or something. And then we'll go ahead and take the color. We'll make that kind of maybe like a gray. And we'll do a kind of like a regular font weight for that. We'll make this maybe just a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit darker. And then we're gonna take this element, the overall frame, the card frame, and specify um, 
we'll do fit content. Okay, so that's our very simple little card and this will work. So what we'll do is I'm gonna right click, make sure we have the actual uh, stack, we'll call this card. We're gonna right click and create a component and we'll just call this um, card. <laughs> and what we wanna do in order to make these unique is add uh, properties or variables with them. So we want the fill to be able to change like the image. So we're gonna add a variable here as an image and I'll just call this person. Then we'll take this text. This has to be added as content. So we're gonna create plain text. We'll call this DESC for description. We'll take this person's name. Again, the content will be plain text and we'll say name. And then finally title will be here as well. So it's like their job title. And we'll add content, plain text and uh, title. Okay, so now that we have our card, what we can do is just drag this off outside of our frame and our layout. And then we just attach this right there. Now what's cool is it doesn't look good. It looks messed up over here in our preview, but if we hit play, you can see it's just automatically repeating them. And it's kind of fast. The default speed, in my opinion, is too fast. So we can adjust all that, inf that, that those settings. So if we select the ticker itself, we can come down here and then specify speed, we want to reduce that maybe to 40%. We'll see what that looks like. All right, so that's a lot better. You could arguably go even slower as well. All right, so now that we have that, um, you might be wondering how we get another card in there. So if we just duplicate this card right here, right, and we use our properties over here that we define, then we can create another unique card. So just to get some other text here, I uh, paste that in and then we'll just say Jane Doe and then count executive two, whatever. And then we could also take the image, go to unsplash, type person and specify somebody random. There we go. Now we can go ahead and specify this element as well. So we hit play and now they're repeating. So obviously you would want more than like five, six or seven. Um, in order to really, if, actually, if a person had their browser maximized in the current situation of how everything's laid out, you know, we could see arguably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, seven cards at a time uh, on a browser that's maxed up. So you want to take into consideration that as well. So don't take our word, you know, take theirs as you scroll down. That's fine. Um, we could do other stuff with this to make it a little bit more interactive. So like, what if you wanted these to kind of slightly grow when they're hovered over? Very simple. We just take the card, we'll go ahead over effects and we'll do a hover and notice how it says 1.1. It's scaling us up already. So if we hit play, we hover over that card specifically, it's going to grow. Now, of course you just right click and copy this, go back to the other card and we can paste that in as well. And now all the cards that we have, which is just a repeating list of two, will do this kind of a cool little focus effect. All right. Um, the final thing I'll do, if perhaps you want to integrate some type of scroll um, animation where this kind of does something when you're scrolling down into it. Again, very simple to do here. All we have to do is just take our scroll animation. Um, we'll do section in view because we already defined a section called main. And this says fade in. Let's just see what the default fade in looks like. So we're gonna scale, we're gonna come down. Yeah, it kind of just fades in. You know, you could do that, that's fine. Um, you could take it a step further if you wish. So if we click on effect for the enter and we choose 3D, um, we can make it maybe do something like, first, in order to add 3D perspective to make it look like a true 3D perspective, we wanna go to styles to click plus and add a perspective. Then when we modify these values, we'll see what it does. So it'll like make it look like it's falling forward. Maybe we could scale it down to like 0.5 or so as well. And we'll see what this kind of looks like. Oh, 0.5 is too much. I think I'll increase that to like 0.7. Let's just hit play and see what this looks like. Yeah. So the reason it's so fast like this is because I the easing set to spring. So what I would do is take our animation over here, change it from spring to ease, 
and we can increase the uh, the duration to like one. We'll see what that looks like. So scroll down. It's going to be a lot smoother this time, but it's taking a little t a long time for it to actually occur. Because look at this. I mean, what is this? Like if somebody stopped right here, it would be kind of ridiculous. So you want to be able to control when this animation occurs. So if we change this viewport maybe to the center, it's going to come in a lot sooner. Just like this. Now, isn't that cool? Now, of course, you also have the ability to define an exit animation, and it's just kind of repeating. And it's just a real nice, very subtle, cool looking effect. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that, you learned something. Definitely uh, check out my coming upcoming course from Figma to Framer. This is actually one of the final projects I'm gonna teach everybody how to do um, in the course. And there's just so much that you're going to learn about that. And again, you can check that out at designcourse.com from Figma to Framer, or wait, sorry, it's Figma to Framer, there we go. So definitely check that out. That will be released here next month and sometime in June. All right, everybody, I will see you soon and goodbye.